Hello from a very sunny Kampala in Uganda today and thank you so much for joining me for a quick thought from the Bible. So Joshua is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I love to read his story. He's such a great example of following what God tells you to do, even when it's hard, even when it's a little bit strange, like walking around a city that you're trying to conquer a few times. But I also love God's interactions with Joshua over and over again in the books of Deuteronomy and in the first chapter of Joshua, God tells him to be strong and courageous, to stand firm, to not be fearful about what he's going to face. It's really encouraging. Joshua chapter one and verse nine is actually the verse that that's adorning the cover of my journal for this year. And it says exactly that. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's an amazing verse. What an encouragement that must have been for Joshua. And I feel like the amount of times that, that God repeated that same statement to Joshua suggested that he needed to hear it. You know, he suddenly had the mantle of leadership thrust upon him and he has to take this Israelite rabble and lead them into the promised land. Moses, their long, well-respected leader is gone and Joshua is suddenly on his own and he's facing many battles against opposition who is stronger than them with an army who's only really had one or two battles in their entire lives. They are really inexperienced, so is Joshua. It's a lot to take on and I really love how, how God like buoys him up and tells him, you can do it. He assures him that he's not on his own. The Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. But as I was reading through the book of Joshua recently, there was a different time when God spoke to Joshua that really caught my attention. So after the Israelites had defeated the city of Jericho in this amazing battle where the walls came tumbling down, they try and take over this, this other little town called Ai. And they didn't realize that a man called Achan had taken some valuable items that were supposed to have been dedicated to God. And so the Israelites were defeated. Now, understandably, there's a little bit of shock there, a little bit of disappointment and a heck of a lot of fear. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 5, we're told that at this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. And Joshua, we're told that he falls face down onto the ground before the ark of the Lord and he stays there for the entire day as do all the elders of Israel. Now, finally, after lying there for the day, Joshua starts talking to God and he asks, why did you bring us into this land for us to die? Why didn't we stay on the other side of the Jordan? What were we thinking? What can I say and do now? We are finished. This is over. It was a nice dream, but now that we've been defeated, well, all these other people, they're going to hear about it and they are going to wipe us out. This is the man who heard from God multiple times to be strong and courageous, to feel no fear. Nowhere in that instruction of God's was it to be strong and courageous only when things are going your way. But I just love God's answer to Joshua's bit of a moan here. In, um, in Joshua chapter 7 and verse 10, the Lord himself says this to Joshua. Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? And he goes on to tell Joshua about the sin that's hanging over the Israelites and what to do about it. But I just love that first part. I find it amazing. It even has an exclamation mark. If God is speaking to you with an exclamation mark, you know that you need to listen. Stand up. Get up. 
Stop moping, Joshua. Get off your face. Get up and solve the problem. It is time to get moving again. See, sometimes what we need is that loving father to come alongside us and say, it's okay. You don't need to be afraid or discouraged because I am right here with you. But sometimes what we need is a little bit of a shake. We need that exclamation mark. We need something to get us up and moving again, especially when we find ourselves in a position of feeling overwhelmed by the circumstances that we're facing, of feeling a little bit defeated, of feeling like we must have done something wrong, of feeling like there's no way to get ourselves out of this situation that we are now facing. Especially when we find ourselves starting to just mope and to moan a little bit, to start to say, God, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Why did you put me in this position? This is ridiculous. There's no hope for me anymore. So if you're struggling today, that's okay. And it's okay to bring that to God by all means. He wants to hear how you're feeling. But listen out for that little voice because it might be that it is time to get up, that it is time to get moving, that it's time to start following God's instruction and to recognize that whatever you're facing, he is bigger than it. And if he's told you to do it, then he's on your side, even if it seems like it's not working right now. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that that encouraged you today. I'll be back on Friday with another thought from the Bible. So I will see you then.